<laughs> Hi folks. <laughs> I'm paddling merrily upstream. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Uh, let me just show you what I'm doing here. I'm doing a sort of having a bit of a bitty a bitty time. I'm kind of trying to pack the kiln and I've got lots of things going on as one does when you're trying to pack the kiln. So in this bucket here, this is a, it's a Chino glaze actually this. And I'm in the process of um, dipping these, um, these smaller tankards. There's just a few here that I'm doing in the, uh, in the Chino. Let me just put this back on the tripod. So, yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to think which is the best place to, maybe we'll put the tripod actually just over here, as the light is coming from behind, that would be better, wouldn't it? Something like that. So, yeah, what I'm going to do, in fact, these are, uh, these are going to be once fired, no bisque firing in these, with these. It's a little bit of a gamble, I'll, I'll be honest with you, because I'm, I'm trying to break away from bisque firing to, to, do, going raw, to do raw firing or once firing. And um, So, let's give that a good stir. Uh, hey Sheena, what's up? Hey Sheena, we're dipping you in the glaze because we're putting the Sheena glaze on here. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, uh, Chino glazes is not something that I, I I know a lot about. It's a full of mysterious glazes, and I've not really had no, enough experience with them. All I do know is that one can um, use them to raw glaze because they have quite a lot of clay in them. So these 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 tankards. As you can see, they're not, they're not even dry yet. You can see they're beginning to dry. So I tend to dip these when they're from leather hard to dry, somewhere in between. So let's, let's do one. I'll show you how I do it. All I'm doing with these is I'm just dipping them on the inside and just over the lip here to there and then the handle. Okay, and then these, these have had a white slip, a porcelainous white slip, which is porcelain clay and 15% felspar, just loosely brushed up the outside. Um, I will in fact be putting an iron oxide kind of decoration over these white patches here. And, um, and then be lightly spraying with wood ash. And then they'll be straight in the kiln. No bisque. Okay, here goes. So just pour in about half like that. Swirl it around. Okay. Wind your wrist up like that. Pour it out and turn your wrist at the same time. Okay, and you'll cover the inside. Now, let's see if we get in, get in the picture. I don't know if I can show this to you. Um, often when I'm glazing, you know, you're going to dip something down in the glaze and you want it to be approximately level. Um, how do you do that? Well, first of all, you take it down and just, just touch it until you see the glaze. It kind of... And put it down, hold it a second or two, bring it up and now dip the handle like that. That should be straight. <laughs> Approximately, yeah. Well, it, it's okay if it, if it isn't a hundred percent. Don't sweat about it. Okay, I'll do another. So this, because it's got a lot of clay in it, the shrinkage rate of the of the glaze, it'll shrink along with the clay. The clay body, you see. 
So you don't get Okay, bit of practice and you can get that um, uh, working reasonably, reasonably well. Let me just wipe this here. Yeah, I am, I, I am so tired of bisque firing that I just want to abandon the project altogether and just go over to raw glazing because I could get much more continuity in the work. This is what I'm finding. I'm not. I'm finding I'm getting bogged down with the the glaze. You know all the different processes. All I want to do is make this make the pots. All right. Oops. Make the pots and then get them. Um, <clears throat> oh, hang on a minute. I've got some music playing in the background there. I'm just gonna just turn that off. Just in case it's coming out on the video, I uh, I don't know YouTube. They get particular about. Oh, you haven't had permission from the the, the, the owners or something. Never mind. So let's do another one. Yeah. So it's exciting, isn't it? But you see, I've got to break. I've got to all my glazes. Most of my glazes are all really designed for. For bisque fire, so I've got to I've got to step away from all that and um, take a walk on the wild side. Um, yeah. So here now, I'm going to get some iron oxide with my brushes and do some simple motifs decorations. And then they'll all have to be thoroughly dried out, of course, and um, and then um, and then put straight in the glaze kiln. You see, no messing. I like that. <laughs> the thing is, you see, when you when you're doing the your, your your throwing, you're starting off with an inspiration, but by the time you've fired it. You know, it's been around the pottery a bit, it's been in the kiln, out of the kiln, it's been sitting on the shelf, and you come then to to pick it up to to put it in the glaze firing and you think, what was I thinking of doing with this one? Hang on a minute. What was <laughs> what was my original inspiration? Because somehow in the in a week or two since I made it, it's it's kind of it's got lost. But by doing it like this, you see. The making and the glazing and decorating, it all happens all at the same time. Now a lot of people, don't know that you can actually do this raw glaze, raw fire, once fire. They think we're, you know, because we've been so conditioned to, um, to bisque firing, haven't we? We've been so conditioned to doing it that uh, we don't, we think that, you know, we, we have to bisque fire, there's no other way. Bisque firing, you know what, in all of the history of pottery, bisque firing has only really been around, yeah, the last hundred years or so. It, it never, the ancient potters or the potters before the modern sort of industrialization of pottery they just once fired their pots with a simple glaze. Probably a glaze that contained a certain amount of clay, maybe some wood ashes, you know, maybe some felspar, uh, things naturally occurring that they could find in nature. And, um, she, yeah. and uh, that's how it was. So what got, it, what got us started on this bisque firing lark? Well, it was the really industrialization of pottery that uh, it's true you get less losses if you bisque fire because but it means that you can employ semi-skilled labor to be able to handle the pots and work the pots whereas dealing with raw pots they're more fragile it demands a little bit more skill let's say a little bit more care you see so 
Yeah, and then uh, and then that that bisque firing spread into the sort of hobby art pottery field, and and so we're you know we're conditioned to thinking that we've got to bisque fire. Well, we don't. We do not. We do not. It's amazing if you go on to uh, Google and just put in raw glazing, raw firing. Try and dig out as much information as you can, but you know try and dig out some glaze recipes. You'll be hard pushed to find much there on raw glazing and raw firing. It's been so pushed into the background. Go on Amazon, put in, put in raw glazes or raw firing pots. You might find one book. One book. No more. So there. Now that says it all, doesn't it? If there's only one book on the topic, talk about the... So, where am I going to put these? I'll put them over there. Those are going to just naturally dry a bit more, and then I shall put them, I shall put them on the, the stove here. Let's swing the camera around here a sec. Dee, 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 dee. Well, you can see there, I've got some pots on the stove. These are just, uh, well, these ones were bisque fired. Smaller tankards with uh, a white milky glaze on the one you just saw me, in fact, in the last clip, I think, mixing up a glaze, and that was that's that's what's on those now. They are waiting to. I'm just drying them off there. They were a little bit hard, the bisque, and didn't take the glaze so well. So I had to, I had to heat them up and and then dip them. And now they're going to dry off here. And when they're dry, I'll take them back in the other room. And um, and decorate them. Sheena, good boy. So um, I've got some pots over there in the on the other side uh, that I'm. I'm wanting to. Yeah, we'll just take one of these. I want to do some in, some impressions. Here, come here a sec, I'll show you my seals down here. Not seals, but I've got a little box of tricks. <laughs> box of tricks. Yeah, these are all... Um, just show you these quickly. And these are all the ones that you can make up... Make up... Oh, hang on, let's pull the camera back a bit. Make up yourself. You see, um, there's little wheels here uh, that you can you can impress into the clay. You see, with different with different uh, um, patterns on. So have a go at making some of those because they're dead easy to make. Um, there's a different one there. Little wheels. You see, here's another one. It's like a herring bone, isn't it? Um, lots of them little guys. Wheels. But these are just bisque fired. They're pieces of clay that I've simply... I've just squashed in my fingers like that, you see? And then I've made a, a pattern on one side. And that will make a nice in, impression, you see? Um, only bisque fire them. And then you can use these to push into the clay. You'll get quite a nice uh, result if you do that. Simple, simple things. Anyway, anyhow you like, you know, you can make them. Here's one that's rolled out piece of clay that is, you can see how that's done, can't you? And that makes like a, a sort of spiral. Um, another one there. Uh, here's so these are so let's put that down a sec here's a um, you know what that is don't you that's a, a walnut um, shell and you can see the the inner part of of the shell there well I, I made a I made this you see from from one of those then hot glued a piece of stick on the back so I can use that to impress into the clay. You get a sort of that kind of shape. 
I had to shave it down, grind it down a bit around the outside here, as you can see, um, to get that. But have a go at making those. And anything else that you find out there that inspires you, you know, just take a piece of clay and... Um, is that focus? In focus? So what I wanted to quickly do was, uh, yeah, with these guys... Uh, hang on a sec. Let's take a sip of brew. So here's a tankard, you see it's waiting, it's waiting for an impression. So this one, this one is simply just a, a dimple in the end as it were. So I'm just going to take that, push it in there like that. Okay, and then we're going to do one, do one. These come out quite nicely. So oftentimes if you're doing raw glazing, you can use like wood ash wood ash and, um, and and clay wood ash and clay will make a quite a quite a nice raw glaze and um, and it yeah um, so wood ash and yeah it makes it can make quite a nice with things that have got impressions on them, the it, the glaze pulls nicely into the into the impressions. So now you could do these impressions before you put the handle on. Uh, perhaps I'm thinking one more there and one more there. All right, so I've got my, I kind of got my finger behind where I'm going to be putting the, making the impression. All right. I mean, this is a very simple little impression, isn't it? Nothing very, nothing very fancy. Maybe just one more there. All right, so that will give a simple. Uh, see, always allow a bit of a bit of always allow the kiln and the glaze and the clay to to show itself. Don't feel you've got to do everything right now. Allow space, allow a little room, a little elbow room for the the glaze to do its own thing for the decoration to do its own thing, for the clay body to express itself, all right? It's just a, maybe a, a thought, but could be a good one. I heard it from somebody. All right, so imagine, now just bear in mind when you're doing impressions in clay on the side of a pot, all right? If you take something like that, all right, and try and push it in the side, you may get an impression but you may crunch in the side of the pot at the same time. All right, Re just remember, smaller, the smaller the seal or the impression that you're putting in, the deeper it will go into the clay, all right? And the better the impression will be. The larger the surface area of the impression tool that you're gonna to apply to the clay, the less of a good impression you're gonna get. And it's also possibly gonna damage the side of the pot. See, that's why I haven't done... You Maybe I should make up a... We could try one like that. Maybe we should just try one and demonstrate it, even if we crunch it. Um, wait a minute, what about that little guy? That's sort of like, yeah, just some grasses or something from nature. Let's... Well, this is actually... Now this one's got no handle on it at all, you see? All right, so maybe we, we'll, let's just see what we can do with this one. So we'll start, say, there. I've got my finger behind that. See, can you see that? Yeah. I don't know if I bring it close, it might go out of focus. Um, so we'll do that one again down there. 
Ah, you see, now that has demonstrated what it pushed. It's pushed in, but it hasn't. It hasn't given me. It's made a rather an indentation, hasn't it? But it hasn't given me actually a good, a good impression. And that's going to be difficult now to. At the top here, you see, I can get my finger inside. I can put that there like that. You just have to learn from experience what works and what doesn't work. Well, that what I did down the bottom there, I'm afraid it didn't really work that well. And I can't quite reach down with my finger to, to get my finger behind it. So I'll have to figure out what I'm doing with that. <laughs> now I've done that to it. But um, I'll tell you what I could do. Now, that'll, I think I'll take a little piece of soft clay, put it on there, then push it in, but it'd probably clog in the in the actual thing. So that's something I'm going to have to, to work on. Alright, so maybe the smaller you use, you see, you get a more definite impression. Hey, I hope that's been of some interest to you. Um, so yeah, we've, uh, we've done some, a little bit of raw glazing over there. And we talked a little bit about these pots, which are with a white glaze, which are, were double dipped, and they are going to be taken through, and I'm going to be glazing those. And then I, we just did a little bit, didn't we, on the on the impressions of soft clay on the side of a pot. Quite nice for raw, for raw glazing. So yeah, I hope that you will. I hope that you will join me <laughs> on this journey of raw glazing. Let's do it together. I think we'll learn a lot and um, we could share glaze recipes and things, couldn't we? Um, a very simple glaze, which you can be used as a raw glaze, is 50% uh, ball clay and 50% wood ash. Just two ingredients. And it can make quite a nice, quite a nice glaze. Anyway, I hope that's of interest to you. Uh, please visit my website, simonleachpottery.com. As I've said in all my previous videos, treadle, wheel, treadle wheels I'm taking orders for, if anybody's interested, let me know, write to me. Uh, workshops, go to my website, simonleachpottery.com, go to the workshops page, you'll see their dates, pick a date that interests you and write, and write to me to see if it's available. Don't just send me the money without first inquiring. Um, Skype, if that interests you, Skype at the wheel, wheelhead to wheelhead. You can also, occasionally, you'll find me doing, on my Facebook page, a, a live Facebook post. I just did one recently. Uh, I was making on the wheel, throwing. So, yeah, that's kind of interesting. You get people tuning in from around the world, and that's kind of, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's all good. It's all educational and it's good promoting exchange of ideas etc which is what it's all about no secrets <laughs> we need to be open books don't we I, at least i think we do well thanks a lot for watching folks take care and i'll see you in the next video bye bye <laughs> Goodbye.